Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 66. Hard to believe we've been going this long, uh, but as always, I really appreciate the fact that you tune in for these, and I do hope that you're getting good and valuable stuff out of it. So in today's Tip of the Day, I want to show you a little bit about how you can move sample data from one model one animation set to another animation set and can uh, do it in portions of it. For example, let's say <clears throat> that uh, you wanted to move the animation of an arm from one model to another model without having to move all of the animation for that animation set. And there's a couple of ways that you can accomplish this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I appear to be losing my voice. Um, but uh, one of the simplest ways, if you're working within the same uh, scene or the same shot, uh, is to just uh, copy and paste the sample data. And by way of demonstrating, I'm going to show you here, I've got two spies, a red one and a blue one. And I've got the red spy doing the, uh, uh, the Halloween taunt animation, the, um, I don't know what they call it, the thriller thing, I think. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click, and, or excuse me, I'm just going to select a spy and I'm going to go down here in the motion editor and I'm going to say copy samples. Uh, and then I'm going to select the second spy. He's in his reference pose and as you can see there's no animation here. And then I'm going to hit paste samples. And it's interesting because he disappeared and that's because one of the samples that was included in that copied set was the... Um, uh, the root transform, which essentially put them both in the same place. So I can just move them back over here. A simpler way to do it might be to copy everything but the root transform. I leave it up to you. So this is one way of copy and pasting. And now they're going to mirror each other uh, entirely. They're going to be moving in exactly, essentially it's exact same animation. But if I decide I don't want to do that, instead I only want to copy and paste, say, oh, let's take his left arm. So, and, and that includes the left collar, the left upper arm, the left lower arm, and the, the hand bip. Uh, so I'm going to uh, select all of those, and then I'm going to go down here and say copy samples, select this spy, and hit paste samples. And uh, now when we play this, you'll see that um, just his hand moves around, which is a little strange looking, but there you go. And you can see that it is mirroring it exactly. Now, the way this works, and the, uh, one of the things that I thought would be interesting and why I brought this up, uh, is because when you copy the sample data, essentially what you're doing is you're taking all of the this graph information that's here, which is really just numbers. It's just internally Source Filmmaker and the Source Engine just stores this information as numbers. Uh, and the numbers are associated with these uh, named bits of uh, the models, the, 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 the named bits of the models, things like BIP hand, BIP, uh, BIP lower arm and stuff. Uh, and so when you copy that information, you get these sets of these numbers. And when you paste it into another animation set, uh, it, will, uh, it will apply it if it can find a match. And by way of demonstration of what I'm talking about, if it can't find a match, if I go and see right now we've got, uh, this guy's got the left hand. So if I take the right hand and I say, uh, so I've got his, his actually I'm gonna take his right arm, all of his, all the elements of his right arm, I'm gonna say copy samples. Now if I go here and select the entire spy's animation set and paste these in, then both hands, both arms will follow the first spy. But if I, for example, just select his face and set paste samples, you can see that nothing actually changed and playing it, nothing occurred. And that's because even though the samples were pasted and it obviously detected that an, an, an action occurred, the, uh, the, the samples pulled had names BIP collar R, BIP upper arm R, BIP lower arm R, and this so and so on and so forth. The, uh, uh, the, the paste action didn't find a match. So it didn't find a place to put that data. Uh, so if I was to select the entire spy and select paste, now his arms move while the rest of his body doesn't, which again looks rather peculiar, but it's mostly to demonstrate the principle of the thing rather than uh, to make something that looks cool, although it is a little, I guess it's cool. Anyway, uh, so that is a, a quick 
uh, uh, sample, a quick summary of copying and pasting sample data. Um, it's really easy to do and it's very powerful, but it only works when the receiving animation set has animation channels named the same way as the source ones. Uh, in the future, I'm going to experiment a little bit and see if there's ways to uh, uh, modify that so you can paste animation data to other um, uh, animation sets without the same named channels. But I have no idea how to do that, but I will look into it and I will let you know what I find out. Uh, in the meantime, I do hope that you have enjoyed this tip of the day. As always, I'm your friend Jimmer Linz. This has been your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day number 66. Thanks for tuning in, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, and for all the great feedback, and for being generally awesome people. It is truly appreciated. I will see you for the next Tip of the Day, and until then, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.